46. He says, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise him as long as I live. David states in Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord. Even though I'm in a cave and I don't like it, I'm going to bless the Lord in the cave. And I'm going to bless the Lord out of the cave. You're going to praise God. What's your assignment? Hezekiah's. Your assignment is to be a living witness. Yes. Your assignment number two is to be an audible witness. Yes. Church, I'm appealing to you. I'm not trying to be offensive here. So many Sabbaths we come in here. And I know the week is rough. I know the week is tough. Yeah. So many Sabbaths we come in here. And I understand it because I grew up as a little boy in this church all up. And we look like somebody slapped us with a wet biscuit. <laughs> I'm not trying to offend you. The Lord spoke to me in this song. I'm speaking to you in love here. Hezekiah says, I don't care what I don't have in the bank or what I do have. I'm going to be an audible witness. Yes. I see some of us, we only get up when our favorite song is sung. We only get up when our favorite preacher comes here. That's neglecting God of praise. Because you are alive on credit. You didn't put nothing in the account. And so you don't deserve to be here. So whenever God allows us to watch your growth up in here, we ought to give him living praise. Thank you, Jesus. Stand up. Thank you, Lord. And some of you will be clapping this out in your, in your jeans. Ellen White tells us in his of Ages that we need to learn how to worship God yes. in our own individuality. Yes. Some of us worship God with cries. Some of us worship God raising our hands. Some of us worship God clapping our hands. Some of us worship God stomping our feet. Some of us worship God jumping up like a frog. But whatever the way God has allowed you to praise, praise! But he also wants you to talk. Come on now. In closing, James McCoy. Late James McCoy. Yes, yes. Oh, how I miss him. Oh, yes. Many churches need some James in them. A brother or sister that was on the street, but now has been delivered and won't shut up. James, I remember. When I met him, he said, Pastor. He said, I was lying in New Haven Hospital. The doctors looked at me and said, I don't know how you're going to make it. The doctor came back the next day and said, I thought you were dead, but I was alive. And he said, even though I could not say anything, he said, I was praying to God. God, if you restore me again, I won't shut my mouth.
in the tradition. And you say, Pastor, I'm scared on any given Sabbath to open up my mouth. But I'm going to tell you, because many of us know what it's like to live on credit. Yeah. We got our car on credit. We got our house on credit. We got our suit on credit. We got our purse on credit. Say, Pastor, I want a different walk this year. 
straighten up the walk. Show me thy ways, David says. Teach me your way. Teach me. I don't know. I can't get it by myself. Teach me. If that is your prayer, I want you to come on to this altar with me. Because I'm praying for myself as I pray for you. I'm in dire need of the cleansing of Jesus Christ. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Your walk has not been pristine. Your walk has not been perfect. But God can straighten it up.
I'm going to give you some time to talk to the Lord. I don't want you looking at me. If you're looking at me, that makes me think that you're super spiritual and think you're the rock. If you don't know of anything in your life that needs that you need to talk to the Lord about, you need to talk to God about your neighbor. But let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I am so glad I'm talking to an appetite change. It was the appetite of David that caused him to go up on the rooftop and gaze too long at that sheep and prolong the temptation and the disaster by going to take her in and sleep with her. It was his appetite for power and cover-up and deception that had him cover up the situation and kill Uriah. But God, I'm reminded that you are an appetite changer. David in Psalm 51 stated, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy tender mercies, blot out Jesus my transgressions my rebellion when I know that I'm doing wrong but I don't even care that I'm doing wrong because of my distorted, twisted dysfunctional appetite blot out my transgressions wash away my iniquities that appetite that gravitates towards jealousy. That appetite that gravitates towards earthly power rather than heavenly power of the Holy Spirit. That appetite that wants to be the top dog instead of being the underdog. That appetite, Jesus, that I've got in me that's resident God. That won't be approval of people rather than the approval of God. That appetite. That appetite, Lord. And always wants to be right and never wants to be wrong. That appetite, that appetite, Lord God, of just wanting to be a drama queen or a drama king. And if I don't have my way, I'll blow the place up and act a fool. That appetite that will not allow you to step up and fight my battles. But I'll push you out of the way because I really don't believe that you are God. That appetite. That won't let you fight my battles, but always allows the flesh to fight its battles. That appetite that would sit up and worry about my children, my bills, and miss church because I don't believe you can make a way out of the way. Father, help our unbelief. Help me, Stephen Gates, our unbelief. Jesus, deal with our distorted appetites. Place within us your appetite. Cleanse us, fill us, fix us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may return to your seats. How many believe that God is an appetite change? Raise your hand. Raise your hand.